Spider-Man 1 was the first big budget and major installment in live action Spider-Man movies and it wasn't bad at all. Now this movie isn't perfect but this origin story was groundbreaking and changed the comic book movie genre forever. It was after this movie that comic adaptations were taken seriously and yeah you could say Blade this and X-Men that but after Raimi's Spider-Man 1 came The Hulk came Hellboy, came X2, which is arguably the best out of the original X-Men films. Sam Raimi changed the game, and I fell in love. Young Keezy was born, and I was only one years old when this movie was released, but because of this film, my parents made me grow up with a Spider-Man pull-out mini couch, eating on Spider-Man kids' plates, playing with Spider-Man action figures, dressing in Spider-Man costumes. I lived and breathed. Spider-Man. So when I was old enough to consciously understand and watch this movie, my jaw dropped. It looked so real, the action heightened my attention span, and Spider-Man became a reality. Now this movie starts with Peter narrating. If somebody said it was a happy little tale, if somebody told you I was just your average ordinary guy not a care in the world, which he does for all three movies, and I'm not a fan of this, but I'll let it slide, including the rest of the campiness and corniness in these movies because I truly believe it was intentional from Raimi. This movie has no mobile phones, and there's 80 televisions on set, so it's not too specific on the era these movies take place, but I believe Raimi went with a more classic Spidey feel with these movies. This movie introduces us to all the classy Spidey characters within the first 30 minutes of the film. Characters like Mary Jane, Harry Osborn, Norman Osborn, born Flash Thompson, Aunt May, Uncle Ben, and Peter Parker of course are all introduced by this time. So the movie paces pretty fast but it's done organically. Also within this time we see Peter with his best friend Harry, see him get bit by the famous radioactive spider be bullied, and also see the love he has for Mary Jane. So the movie makes the points it needs to very fast, which in my opinion is a good thing. Oh yeah, at the 14 and a half minute mark we get this scene. What the f- Sam Raimi definitely puts his horror touch on these movies in some scenes, and I'll talk about it as we review the entire trilogy, but to me, it can be pretty funny at times. But anyways, we soon after that get to see Norman Osborn's origin take place because he feels threatened that they want to take his experiments back to formula. He's a science experiment gone wrong, and after this is when we see the changes that the spider bite has made to Peter Parker. So at the 20 minute mark, we already see how our antagonist has become a villain, and how our protagonist has become a hero. Yeah, maybe this movie does move pretty fast anyway. He saves Mary Jane from falling with her food and... Oh, this scene has zero effects? It's real? Okay, that's pretty impressive. Peter beats a Flash. Flash disappears from basically the rest of the trilogy. And that's one thing I acknowledge about the MCU Spider-Man. But we will talk about that when we get to those movies. Back to Raimi. Ew, Sam, you're giving me fucking nightmares. We see Peter making his suit, testing his powers by climbing walls and shooting his webs. Wait. All right, pause. Anyways. These are fun scenes. I love seeing a hero test his new abilities in origin stories. It makes me feel good, but it's time for Uncle Ben to get blasted. So before this happens, Peter and Uncle Ben have this angry conversation in the car, and Peter says, You're not my dad! This is the last thing to talk about before he goes off to make some quick cash wrestling. Eventually, Peter isn't paid fairly, and this causes him to be selfish and let a criminal go due to his anger and then later he finds his uncle badly injured by that same criminal he let go and the last thing he said to his uncle was you're not my dad so when his uncle dies here it makes peter feel that much more guilt which does make the scene hit very hard peter chases this criminal down and he falls to his death Anyways, we see Iron Man make a very early cameo in this movie, and then... Ah, some kind of freaky little something wackadoo. <laughs> these extras in these movies are hilarious and make the movies that much more enjoyable, but... Remember, with great power comes great responsibility. 
it still hits every part of my body. We see the Daily Bugle introduced because Peter now needs to help Aunt May with the bills after Ben's death. And then... Hi! Hey. What are you doing around here? I'm, uh, I'm begging. I hate their relationship. Anyways, Norman says, You know how much I sacrifice? Crashes the festival, turns people into skeletons. We get a Professor X cameo, and Harry tries to, uh. Uh. <coughs> um, we, we get to see Spidey versus Gobby. Impressive! <laughs> Later after this fight, we then see Green Goblin threaten the Daily Bugle for the source of Spider-Man and... Sleep. <laughs> oh my gosh. This movie is unintentionally funny and it's aged like milk in the best way possible. <laughs> we see Spider-Man get horny with the wet shirt, red head, and then... It's okay. <laughs> Bro, back to back. Okay. This movie is a comedy action thriller and you can't change my mind. Now I've got to say I love the Raimi films but Toby Spider-Man was kind of corny with his quips. He also isn't built very agile so his Spider-Man really didn't impress me but moving on. Gabby finds out Spider-Man is Peter, sends Aunt May to the ER and then we get to the climax. Let die the woman you love or suffer the little children. Uh, okay, have I mentioned this movie hasn't aged well? Even though Green Goblin is under the bridge here, so he logistically shouldn't have been able to be hit by the people on the bridge, I still love this scene. This is how you bring New York in the right way. I'll talk about you later anyways. We get into the final battle between Goblin and Spidey and this <laughs> does put a smile on my face. This battle is so dark, violent, there's no music, so it's all silent. Hey, I rhymed. You feel every punch. Spider-Man is fucked up, and we see an intense battle go down. <laughs> Did he just front flip? Eventually, Norman tries to trick Peter, but Peter's Spidey sense kicks in, and Norman says, oh. Willem Dafoe gets stabbed in. These nuts. <laughs> Got him. <he>. Got him. <he. laughs> And Spidey leaves his dead ass body for Harry to see. Oh my god, the fucking balls on this kid. But before that iconic final swing that we all know, the movie ends with Whatever life holds in store for me, I will never forget these words. With great power comes great responsibility. This is my gift, my curse. Who am I? I'm Spider-Man. Overall, this movie has its problems, but with that comes an iconic origin story for the hero I love, and Sam Raimi brought it to the big screen during a time where all these movies were a complete joke. This movie has a special place in my heart and shows me exactly why I love Spider-Man.